had it on my heart for a, a, a couple of months. I feel like I've been in my own personal revival with the Lord in my quiet times, in my times with God, all week meditating on the scriptures. We're going to be talking about hearing God. Hearing God. So I, I'm really excited about it. I'm going to be every day um, trusting God for the scriptures, trusting God to hear for myself. I am determined to grow in this area of my life, hearing God. What that means, what that looks like, how does that sound, why, where, hearing God. So, And, and as we go along, it's, it's so often, I was thinking, and this is why it's been such a challenge, I know how I hear from God, but I don't always know how to tell you that I have heard, that I know, that I know. As clear as if you had been standing next to me, I know that I know, that I know God spoke to me. I recently have been trusting God for a new job. I'm in a job, was in a job, but this incredible job came up. And as I read it, it's like every line of that job description was mine. It was me, it was, that was it. I'd not, I hadn't felt that. I'd been trusting God for months to say, Lord, what's the next step? Because I'd finished my MSc, my master's, and I'd done the bit that I wanted to do, but what was the next step? So trusting God, trusting God. So I had read this job description and every line was just me, all of it. So now I'm trusting God for this job. I'm going, God, I know that this is my job. You know that this is my job, but they don't know that this is my job. I shouldn't even have to interview for this job because this job is so my job. So anyway, of course I had to interview it and trust him. But we're going to be talking, how do you know it's God? And God will, there are usually three different areas and over time we're going to talk about those different sometimes it, it can be circumstances so circumstantially that job had come at the most phenomenal time the word of God confirms that this is his plan and will and purpose but you also get that direct specific clear conscious word of God to you so I remember on this with this job situation, I, I went to the restroom, call it the restroom politely, um, and as I was getting up to leave and go, it's like the imprint of God came and he said to me, we're no longer going, it was like I came down to a chi junction and I was no longer going right. We were, we were no longer going, the Lord and I, we were no longer going right, we were going left. Now you go, Marion, how do you, where do you, what? And I have been praying over, how did I? He didn't come in a big booming voice. Sometimes I hear specific words. When I wanted to move jobs, I remember being outside in my patio and I was so impatient. I'd finished my, my MSc and I'd, I'm like, now we're moving, we're going, we, we're getting out of here, we're going, what's the next step? And as again, I got up to move, go back into the house, the Lord said to me, hold steady. Now, one of the ways I know God speaks to me is usually they're words that I don't normally use in my everyday language. God never speaks to her in her language. So they're, they're, they're unusual words. Hold steady. If I told Pastor to stop, I'd tell him to stop. Like, no, no, don't go that way. God said to me, hold steady. And if I didn't hold steady, um, and he had to remind me again down the line because I got the hold steady I held steady for like a very short time and then I was like okay I'm going now God and God had to say excuse me hold steady so but if I hadn't held steady I would never have seen that job and that job interview because it came in a very specific way at a specific time to the local authority that I'm working in. And if I had left when I was planning on being impatiently going, I would never have seen it. So, so we're going to be talking about hearing God. I'm so excited about it. Who here has a personal relationship with God? Just show of hands. Personal relationship with God. Okay, I'm not counting, but just you think you've, you've got a personal relationship with God. Great. How do you talk to them? When do you talk to them? Do you talk to them in different ways at different times? So sometimes we text. Right now in this day and age, sometimes we email. I don't think we email our closest person, but I'm trying to think, yeah, sometimes I've emailed my daughter. But a lot of the times face-to-face -face talking, right? 
So I talk with her, we walk. Sometimes we in a crowded area, we're shopping. Sometimes it's quiet. Sometimes it's at the home. Sometimes it's late at night. Sometimes it's early in the morning. That's my closest personal, natural relationship. Okay. So how can we say we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ if we don't have all of that above that I just said. Talk with us face to face. Hear specific things. Laugh with them. Well, I laugh, hopefully. Hopefully some of your really good relationships you laugh with, you share with, you have fun, you encourage. I know some of my closest friends, I will, will encourage us, we laugh with each other, sometimes we complain and then I, I encourage them or correct them or give them a, a word of wisdom or give them a, like a, an instruction. Sometimes they're asking for my, my support or I'm asking them for their guidance. All of those things are part and parcel of a personal relationship. And it is this bit that, the bit that we pray and we speak is not a problem to most of us, to the body of Christ as believers. So believers don't really have a problem with um, praying, speaking, talking, um, even trusting God as this great benefactor, as this great, kind, powerful benefactor, or as uh, we know he's forgiven our sins and we're on our way to heaven, and yeah. But he is so much, much, much more. Hearing God should be part and parcel of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Hearing God and understanding not just goosebumps, not just odd once in a while exceptional moments. We are meant, I was meditating on this, and that word meant just imploded on the inside of me. We are meant to have as daily bread the word of God to us. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That's not just the Logos word. That is the Rhema word. Whether God chooses to highlight a word to you, a song, a scripture, something someone else has said to you, and we're going to go through the months, we're going to go through all the different ways that you can know that you know with incredible certainty that God has said. God has spoken. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, this is what the leading. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. So it's, it's not about, our problem is not the problem, and that's why I really want to nail this, is our problem is not about um, doing life with God. Our problem is hearing God. Okay, so just so we need to clarify, in order to hear God, if you think of it in some senses as we're all in a house, and God's in the house. There are lots of rooms in the house, and you're in the, in the garden playing outside because it's a great day. Or you're in the kitchen making your favorite meal, but you're in the house, okay? Hearing God has to come with being in the house. At least you have to be. That's why I say, do you have a personal relationship with God? Now, I know there are, there are examples where God has spoken to unbelievers um, extraordinary in a way to reach them and God is never past that so if anybody here doesn't have a personal relationship with God you can ask God to talk to you even though you haven't given your life and heart to him and you're not in some senses living in the house with God amen God will still honor a prayer and a request and a cry for him, for, for him to speak to you but the best is to be in the house. Now we are in, as believers, we live in the same house. I'm going to give you scripture upon scripture until you think, oh my goodness, Marion, that's, that's way too many. God's expectation of you and me is that we would live a life of daily bread where these moments of hearing God and knowing he's spoken to you and that he's guided you and he's led you without doubt not like, did he or didn't he? Maybe, I think he might have. What do you think God's saying? What do you think God's doing in my life here? Do you think he wants me to have that job? I don't know. Let's kind of try it. 
Should we try it? And then there's this whole thing that Christians live in, and I think, oh my goodness, everything comes down to fate. Well, if it happens, it's God's will. Well, well, that ain't, sometimes it's not God's will. Amen? Now, there is a place where you and I live in where all things work out for good for those who will trust him. When there are things beyond our control and things happen to us and there is calamities and there are disasters and there are hard times and there's stuff, perhaps decisions other people have made that are not um, our decisions. I'm not saying that God won't be with you in all things because all things work out for good. But being led by the Holy Spirit is not a random act. It's not fate. It's not, well, well, if that door closes, that's Old Testament. That, that, that is, and God only used that on a very few occasions. That's what we're going to learn. We're going to learn the primary ways that God speaks to us. Because if we don't understand that, you see, God will talk in many different ways. He will minister. He will. The, the, he, he encompasses different cultures. He encompasses different personalities. We, we're incredibly complex, different people. But God has primary ways. And if you're looking, for example, I found this quite amazing. God's primary way is not to speak to you and I in dreams. Now, I can tell you, I've in, my, in one hand, I can tell you dreams that I've had that are spiritual dreams that, that are um, life-changing dreams for me. There are those uh, incredible, I wake up and I know that I know that God has spoken to me. Um, I have one that I'm still, is still working out in my life. Um, moments where, but that's not God's primary way. Do you know why? Well, God wants you awake. Amen. God doesn't want to sidestep your subconscious and your, your conscious world. He doesn't want to have to get to you through. Now, sometimes God will do that. And I think if I look back at the things God said, there's no ways that picture or that dream I would have captured in another way in my life. So we need to learn. Okay, God, you see, it's, it's like fitting in with God's slipstream. Amen. Amen. It's like he, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. What is the leading? So he's going to lead you in the primary ways that he will speak to you. And then there will be occasions where he speaks in other ways. And hearing God comes in another way. And then we're going to talk about, well, what if God doesn't speak? And I have been listening. I mean, what I'm praying for, the anointing that I'm praying for, is anointing of Eli. Anybody know Eli Samuel in the Bible? He goes into the temple and Eli gets, now you must remember at that time, just very brief hist Israel, I I the history around Israel is God hadn't spoken to them for a very long time. God spoke through the priests and, and the high priests and God wasn't speaking. They were not in a good place. So Eli is very old. Samuel's brand new. He's in the house of God. He's sleeping and he hears a voice. So loud and so audible, he thinks it's Eli. And three times he goes to Eli, and eventually Eli catches it. And Eli goes, I know this, what's happening? This is God. And he says to little Samuel, go back. And the next time you hear the voice, say, Lord, your servant is listening. Amen. So sometimes we need prompting. I mean, why do we need, thus saith the Lord? <laughs> we don't even speak in Elizabethan English. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, as if that would have some more impact on us. You just need to be listening for the touch of God on something that a godly friend is talking to you about. And perhaps not even correcting you, because if you're that open, you will hear it even before it's a, 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 a real correction coming. You know? So, it, it is about tapping into the Spirit. But again, remember, it's not meant to be exceptional, extraordinary, and some of those are. God has got favorites. I'm like, no, Jan, I'm sorry. God hasn't got any favorites. God favors. The, the thing is, it's, it's like the river. That's what I said to her. The river is there for everyone. She just jumps in the river and swims in it constantly. She hears God so much because that's what she chooses to do, not because she's God's favorite. All right? You are God's favorite just as much. God, you were mean to hear. Amen. You were mean to hear.
So I'm trusting for an Eli, Eli anointing. Amen. We need that, that constant, constant, clear guidance. I'm going to go through a few scriptures. I think, uh, will you put them? So, so Genesis 1.27 Okay, that is all about God made you in his image and likeness. In other words, God is a relational God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us. God was in relationship before you even were a thought. And a relational God made you in his image and likeness. Hey, man, I must keep an eye on the time. What are we? We, we are okay. So, so number one, your very DNA is made for God. You were meant to have a personal, intimate, conversational relationship with God. You're going to hear these words so many times over your mouth. Like, now, if you want to ever look at how God meant for you and I to walk, this was God's blueprint. This was God's architectural design. He made Adam, and he walked with Adam in the cool of the day every day. That is what eventually when we get to Jesus, Jesus died to give us so we could get what we were originally meant to get, which was the Garden of Eden. Now, unfortunately, we're not in the physical Garden of Eden. We will one day be. But that's how we, the relationship was made. Right from the beginning of time, God was speaking. God wanted to speak. There I will meet you. There I will meet you from above the mercy seat, from between the two. It's just all about how God used to speak to the Israelites, a regular place of conversation, interchange, conversational interchange between the high priest and God, the mercy seat over the ark of God. Okay, so that, that, that's really complicated. We don't, thank goodness, have it. But God wanted to speak. His whole intent, his whole purpose, the reason we created was for God to talk all the time to dwell, to live, to abide. Amen. Can we see the next one? There I will meet you, meet you and speak to you. I mean, I just love that because you almost feel that you can hear the heart of God come out of that. Can you hear God's intent? They will know that I'm their God who brought them out of Egypt so that I might dwell among them. God wanted to dwell amongst us. This was always at the heart of God to abide, to live, to dwell, to have his home in us. Can we go to the next one? Ah, Moses face to face. Imagine having your intimate partner. Imagine if the pastors, they spoke, but they never, ever spoke face to face. Ever. It was just like only via text or email or virtual world. I mean, we live in a virtual world at the moment. I do in work. But, but God wants face to face. Sometimes I'm so desperate. I mean, I'm just so happy to get out of the house and go and see a real live person and not just a computer. They're all on computer. But face to face doesn't mean God is going to come down in a physical form. But face to face can be just as real and clear and concise and specific. Hey Amen. It's not a blur. It's not the goosebumps or the myths or the, you know, there's nothing, there should be nothing that is, God is, there's some stuff that's unclear about God that we will only know when we get to heaven one day. But this is not one of it. God's will and plan for your life, a certainty of whether you should take that job or not, shouldn't be one of the uncertainties. How God wants you to conduct yourself, who God wants you to be in relationship with, what are the next steps? In, in, in fact, it's not always going to be about guidance and leading you. Just hearing him say, I love you. Laughing with him. I often laugh with the Lord. I find, I, I find stuff that, that, that I'm talking and I'm praying and then I just hear as if he's laughing and I'm laughing. That is, a, that is a, the, the, the relationship, the back and forth that we are meant. That, that, that's the much more, right? Can we go to the next one? We see that in that previous scriptures about the friend. You see, God wants to be a friend. The Israelites heard God speak to them from the midst of the fire. Can we go to the next one? Psalm 23. He makes me to lie down. He leads me beside still waters. Amen. Me. You. You need to, if it's again hard, write it out. Do the legwork. Take the time. Amen. I... Um, have done the books on emotional intelligence and one of the greatest, most important things about changing your life is changing the way you think. 
if you are not prepared to put any time in and invest anything in your emotional intelligence or your spiritual walk, you will get nothing out, nothing in, nothing out. God loves you regardless. It's not about favor. It's not about God having favorites or it's easier for one than it is the other. It's about understanding God properly and understanding how God works. That's what it's about. He leads me. Teach me to do your will for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. Let's go to the next one. Ah, he called Abraham my friend. Amen. Even from the beginning. Next one. Then you shall cry and the Lord will answer and you shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. Does God actually say here I am? Yes, he does. He says it loud and clear as if it were a booming voice. The Lord will guide you continually. Next one. And then we go all the way into the New Testament. You know when someone is leaving or someone is dying, do you know that they say the most important things? Or they should. You would think that they would. You would want to, right? At the end of your life. If you know you've got five minutes left with your children, what do you want to say? You're going to make sure that you capture, capture the most important things to say to your children in those last minutes, moments, days. And Jesus said this. He said he and his father would come to them and make our home in them. He was telling his disciples, don't worry, I'm going away. Because you know what? Something even better is going to happen. I'm going to come and have my home with you. I'm going to live and manifest myself in your life. I'm going to walk with you and talk with you. So I ain't really going away. All right, let's, I think that's it. As in those scriptures. <laughs> Amen. So can we quickly just, I'm going to cover three um, main obstacles to hearing God and just understanding because there's such this paradox of all these scriptures, this incredible church history. If you listen to any great man of God, he will tell you God leads him. So we really believe in listening to God and hearing God. We know it. We've seen it. Every, every song we sing, every worship song we sing, it's all about God lead me, guide me. It's, it's like we don't have to be convinced. We know that God's individual leading and guiding and talking, and, and even these great men of God that we want to emulate, they hear from God. Yet the paradox is that we don't have it. We don't know it, we, or we don't understand it. We've got an inkling, when a, a sort of a, a vague, uh, God kind of spoke to me, I think God spoke to me, maybe he did, and he spoke to me a few years ago. But what if it was daily? What if it should be daily? What if it was meant to be daily? Amen. So number one, we need to understand that God's communications will come in many forms. I I briefly covered this, all right? God will speak to you in different ways, but he's got primary ways. And we're going to go through that. Number two, if you've got a wrong motive for seeking to hear from God, you will find that it's really difficult for his voice to come through and what wrong motive if your motive is purely about trying to predict the future because you're worried everything is anxiety based everything is self-consumed and preoccupied with self then you will struggle to hear God because God is not about to be your palm reader Okay, God is not about to be your Ouija board or your whatever board just so that you don't have to struggle with anxiety because you've got a clear understanding of, of. I mean, at at the moment at universities, I think they call them futurologists. There's a whole study of the future and how to predict the future. This is not about dealing with your anxiety so that you don't have to be anxious so that you can just completely know what tomorrow is going to bring because you're so worried about tomorrow. Amen. God wants to deal with your anxieties. He wants to, where necessary, he will show you. But it's a trust walk with God. So God's relationship with you is about trust. It's about walking a walk and some and trusting him because he's not going to illuminate every aspect of it. Just so that you don't have to be anxious. So wrong motives. Also, if you want to know, um, have God speak to you just because it's it's kind of fashionable and it makes you feel good and makes you sound good and makes you look good and it's nothing to do with his kingdom seek ye, seek ye first the kingdom of God it's about God's kingdom his purposes amen God wants to be a co-laborer 
in his kingdom with you. God wants to be collaborative. Amen. That is the heart of God. He wants a partner. He doesn't want someone who just is trying to use him so that they can predict the future just so that they not, don't have to be scared about it. Okay? If you're trying to be absolved of all responsibility so that God can tell you, so you don't have to be, maybe I've made the right decision, maybe I've the wrong decision. God wants you to take responsibility for your life. See, that's the third thing. We need to understand that God wants a partner. Sometimes we see God as this God who's just going to tell me. You know, we want to sit down with a piece of paper and we just want to be God to dictate. This is what we do. This is where we'll go. This is who we'll marry. This is where we... God doesn't want that. Who of us would do that with our own children? We want to slowly lead and guide our children. So when it comes to choices, they make the right choices, right? If we had to tell them permanently, all the time, everything, how are we going to grow them into maturity? And it's the same with the Lord. The Lord's not going to tell you everything because God wants to know what you think, what you feel, what you like, what interests you, what excites you. And I'm finishing up. It's, it's God's going to guide you. He's not going to override you. Amen. God's going to guide you. He's not going to override your will. He gives you the desires of your heart. God puts them there and he works with you. And, and it's in trusting him. You see, if you let the, the word of Christ dwell in you richly, you'll know the word. You'll know the plan. You know you don't want to do things that, that, that are outside of God. It's my desire for you and me. <laughs> Amen. Because I said as I prayed, this is about wherever you are in hearing God, there's more. Wherever you are, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, God doesn't mind if you're a babe in Christ. Even if you're outside the house, God will speak to you. If you're in the house, but you're just in the house, God will guide you and direct you and lead you. If you're in the house and you're a little bit further on like me and God's spoken a few times and you're kind of sensing and you know, I want more. I need to be, I need to know more. I need to hear more. I need to make sure that God's not talking to me and I haven't listened and I haven't heard. I want to hear it. I want to sense it. The Bible says God comes to bring us life, life more abundantly. When we live not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's like we literally live. That word is zoe. It's life. It's abundant life. So when you and I are living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, we're really living. Amen.